Hey, what's up everyone? It's Brian with Kaufman Home Automation. Uh, last video, I showed you a new product. It was our RGB wall switch. And someone in the comments had the genius idea that um, you should be able to hold the switch and it would cycle through the colors and then also sync those colors to a light somewhere. So I went ahead and implemented that and I'm gonna show it to you right now. Now the way that this is implemented, it's a separate YAML file that you have to compile in yourself. Um, so it's not gonna be available in the normal update bin file that you would download in Flash. Um, you're gonna have to have this in your ESP Home dashboard, um, which I did a video before, so check that out. And what you end up with is that it's gonna have a card here in the dashboard. And here's kind of what you should have as the basic contents. Um, except you're only going to have one package, which is the normal RGB switch YAML file. And you're going to need to add in this extra YAML file that I put on the GitHub. Um, rotate colors, sync to uh, homeassistantlight.yaml. Um, and it needs to be before the first one. Um, so first is this rotate and then the normal cough RGB switch YAML file. And then what you're going to end up with, um, if that's all you do, is add that YAML file. You're gonna have your switch that toggles on and off, uh, same as normal when you press it, but then when you hold it down, the big light's gonna cycle through the color wheel. Um, I just have a program to go around, kinda like the hands on a clock. And whenever you stop, it'll stay on that color. And then when you turn it on and off, it's gonna remember that and return to that color. So we got the switch rotating through colors when we hold the button, and that's pretty cool. Um, but we really, to make the most of this, want to be syncing that to a light. Um, so head back to your YAML file, and to do that, you add this has light entity substitution, and then set it to the name of the light entity or the entity ID that you want to control. And then go ahead and install. It's going to recompile the firmware and uh, flash it back to the switch, and then you're going to be ready to go. Now that you've got the light switch reprogrammed with the light entity that you want to control, now you can do that. You can use the switch to control the light. So first of all, you press the switch, and it's going to turn the light on and off. Um, so basically using the light switch just like a normal light switch, but then you hold the switch down and now the light is going to cycle through colors with the switch. You let go of the button and it's going to stop where it is and you can hold it back down if you want to continue cycling and you can press the button to get back into white. You just toggle it on and off. And this YAML file that you add, um, it's also going to sync the state of the light uh, entity and Home Assistant back to the light switch. So if you have got like some automation or something that turns the light off directly, the switch is going to see that and it's going to turn itself off as well. So it's kind of a two-way syncing. There's actually quite a bit of customization that you can do through substitutions. So take a look at the YAML file on GitHub and up at the top is the substitution section. And that's going to list out all the different settings that you can change, what the substitutions are, and what the different values mean. And any of these that you want to change, you just need to copy and paste the substitution to the substitution section of your individual device YAML file. And then just change the value to whatever you want. Click install and then that's going to recompile the firmware uh, with that substitution and flash it back to the switch. And then the switch from then on, the behavior is going to change accordingly. So just walking through these real quick. The first two are save on state and save off state. And what it means by saving the state is um, copying the colors that you cycle to to the config light entities. So that later on when you turn the light switch on and off, the uh, colors are going to stay with what you cycle to. By default, it's only gonna save the on state. When the switch is off, it's still gonna cycle through the colors, um, but it's not gonna save that. When you turn the light on and back off, it's gonna to return to whatever you previously configured with the uh, big light on off uh, config entity. Next are the delay settings. And there's two different settings here. One is initial delay, and that is the delay from when you press the button and how long it has to be held until the cycle starts. And then change delay is within the color change cycle, uh, how often it's gonna change the color of the light. Below that is the color settings. And so, like I said, it, right now it's just set by default to just travel around the color wheel, uh, like the hours on a clock, there's 12 of them. Any of these you wanna customize, maybe like a certain shade of red or green or whatever, 
Um, you can just redefine these in your YAML file and now the color is going to cycle through that instead. Then you've got the has light entity we've already talked about. It defines the light entity you want to control. Um, below that, there's a number of brightness entities. And this is for just toggling the light on and off. You can control what is the brightness of the light going to be. And it's pretty slick because you can set not only brightness or brightness percent, uh, you can also have an entity. So instead of being a fixed percentage, it's going to adopt a sensor value from Home Assistant as the brightness. Or if you set both entity and attribute, now it's going to be an attribute of some uh, entity in Home Assistant. So the purpose of this is um, a lot of people might want to have like circadian rhythm lighting, um, which I do. And now you can automatically turn the light on directly to those values instead of like just turning on the light and then your uh, the circadian integration kind of picks up from there. This is going to have a lot smoother fade because it's going to go directly to the brightness that you want. Below the brightness settings are some similar settings for color. And again, this is for the color of the light when you just turn it on and off by pressing the button. And again, you can either have an entity, an entity and an attribute or a fixed value. And that, like I said, for the brightness is so that you can directly go to whatever the circadian uh, rhythm color is that you are getting from an integration. And then this value can also be either in RGB color, uh, color temperature in Kelvin, or a color temperature in MyReds. By default, I've got 250 MyReds just because uh, that's kind of what works well for the cough bulbs. Um, it's right in the midpoint of the color temperature scale. Um, any of these that you set, it's going to overwrite that 250. And if you don't want to toggle on and off with any color given, then you can set the MyReds fixed to none. And that's going to just keep whatever color the light's at. So for instance, if you cycle through to blue, it's going to stay blue. And then when you press the button to toggle the light on and off, it's just going to keep going back to blue each time. That's all the settings that we have for now. Um, I've got a few ideas that I want to get in here. So keep an eye on the substitution section or the readme on the GitHub and I'll explain those there once they're added. And I know you guys are going to have some other stuff you want this to do, um, some stuff I didn't think of. So send in your ideas and I'll see what I can do to get them implemented. Um, but that's all I got for today. So hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you next time.